Welcome to Forester's Beach Sabbath School this morning. Welcome especially to all our friends out there in Zoom land. And this morning I would like to introduce to you Pastor Dr. Kamsi Paturian. He is a very busy man. He is here from Laos. He arrived last January to settle his children into education at Sydney University, got caught with COVID, and he's been here ever since. His sister is my boss at the preschool. She worked for me for 10 years. His daughter-in-law works with me as a teacher in the preschool, as does his niece. His sister is also an early childhood teacher. He has worked in so many places in New South Wales. He's worked at Fulton College in Fiji, but mainly he works in the Eastern Asian countries of Laos, Vietnam and Thailand. He's a lecturer at our university out there. He has been Dean of Theology at Fulton College. He is here to share with us this morning the work that he does in Laos, in Laos. And I'm going to hand it over to him now. Welcome this morning. I'm so glad you have come to share with us the things that you are doing to fulfill the commission that Jesus gave us to share the gospel. Thank you, Ramsey. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for inviting me here to um, share with you. Um, thank you for having me and my family. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's like coming home. I've been working here um, before going overseas. Um, you know, I was um, at Cabramada. Let's see what I have, my PowerPoint. Yeah. So there are many stories I have to tell you today. Uh, Christine did not tell me how much time I have, so I prepare about three hours of stories worth. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'll, I'll share some of the stories that I will leave out some. So you, if you are interested, you can contact um, Christine and get uh, my emails. You can contact me by my email, and you can be on my, um, my list of um, newsletters. You can have more stories then, uh, because stories happen all the time. Miracles happen in Laos. A lot, a lot of stories. Um, so that's a bit small, but anyway, um, just a little bit about myself. I was born in Laos, and then I um, came here to Australia as a refugee around uh, 1987. And then I started working with Greater Sydney Conference, the Cabramara Church, and went to Avondale to study, uh, finished my theology there, uh, and then uh, worked at Cabramara for 12 years before we went overseas, uh, ended up in Myanmar, uh, and then back to uh, Australia. I was um, brought up to uh, Darwin, a church pastor there, and then went to Thailand for several years before ended up uh, in F Fiji. Uh, for a year, uh, and then we came back to uh, Darwin again, and went back to um, Thailand, uh, Asia Pacific University, looking after Laos, and helped teach at the university, uh, up until now. So, um, yeah, just as I said that we were caught up here from last year, could not go back, and the government will not allow us to go out of the country unless we complete our vaccination. So we have got our first jab just a few days ago, and that's Laos. So some of you don't know Laos. I know that Laos is a, a, a very small country, and not many people know about it, but if you heard about uh, Indochina War or Vietnam War, uh, because our uh, Australian soldiers also fought in that war. Uh, Laos probably is the center of the war, actually, not Vietnam. Uh, there were more than three million tons of bomb uh, dropped in Laos. So Laos became the most bombed country on the planet, actually. More bombs 
drop in Laos than in Germany in, for the whole uh, World War II. So there's still 25% of Laos uh, that cannot be uh, used, the land cannot be used because of the unexploded ordinances. So there's still a lot of problems there and it still kills and maim people continuously. Uh, Lao Church uh, started around 1957 when uh, Pastor Dick Hall went to northern Laos and then started uh, sharing the message of the gospel there. And he only could work for only three years and then the war reached his place and he had to be evacuated back to United States. Um, at the same time, Pastor Angel Beaton from the Philippines started his work in Vientiane capital around uh, 1968 and then uh, he built a church there. So we will see um, after that, um, you know, um, they left the country since 1975 and then no, no contact with the outside world. The very few members were persecuted. Uh, still now we are being persecuted. You have to remember that Laos is a communist country and communists don't like Christianity so they, they just persecuted us. Uh, as I'm speaking here, our members in northern Laos, one of the provinces, have been visited by the police and then forced them to stop worshipping. So a lot of persecutions happen and we try to solve that and try to work with the government uh, the way we can. Uh, but we can manage to go and with God's help, uh, we still continue to grow. Uh, that's our first church, uh, was built uh, in 1969 by the refugees, um, the first members that Pastor Dick Hall uh, baptized and then they escaped from the war and they started uh, building this church. That's a historic church, we still keep that. And this is a church that uh, was built by Pastor Beaton uh, in Vientiane capital, uh, 1973. Uh, that church has been uh, demolished and built another church in place of that because of uh, the lack of land so we cannot really find a land to build another church. So we have to demolish this one and build a bigger church. Um, story of uh, this guy, he was living at the back of the church during the communists uh, took over the country. They tried to take over our church and they came and told him, you need to leave the church uh, in two weeks time. Uh, he said, oh no, I cannot leave, I have nowhere to go. But uh, the week after, the captain who came to tell him to leave the church uh, died mysteriously, so no one came to bother him anymore. So the church still stood there. <laughs> Actually, the first church also had something happen, but I, I, I didn't tell you. The first church, they also moved in, actually took off our pews and they moved in and lived there, the, the army people, uh, during the uh, took over, the, and then uh, they um, saw Jesus, someone saw Jesus, and then uh, they were thinking that it was ghosts. And so they, the next day they left the church and gave back the church to our people. So, you know, God preserved his two churches that, uh, that we had. Um, so this guy, uh, Silo, also died just a few days ago. This man, he, uh, he had uh, a seizures and he just um, passed out. And uh, he, he was pronounced dead by the, gov by the hospital uh, because he couldn't respond to anything. Uh, we, um, we felt sorry for him because he was the only one who left the family for Jesus and the family rejected him. And I read this text and I said, well, maybe, maybe the Lord will save him. So we prayed for him and then he actually survived and then uh, came back and uh, his English even improved after that. So we sent him to, uh, to study at um, Mountain View, the Philippines to become a pastor. He graduated already. So um, this man actually, um, the doctor operated on him. You see his tummy there and uh, his intestine just uh, protruded out and then uh, they said, oh no, we cannot do anything about that. And it's, so just left it open like that. So, so he'd take him home, he would die at home in a few days. But anyway, he didn't die. 
the Lord healed him because a lot of people pray for him. And as a result, his wife, his family, uh, his children, three of them there uh, became, um, two of them became pastors, another one became a teacher for us. Uh, so as a result of that, God preserved his life. His uh, daughter and the family, also the, the grandchildren also became Christians and became uh, workers for the Lord. This boy was brought to us in a chain like that uh, because they went to different places. Even from the hospital, they could not heal him. Uh, he was demon-possessed and went to the Buddhist temple, went to other Christian denominations, could not do anything for him. They heard that the Adventists are expert in casting out demons, so they brought him to us. We were having a meeting at that time. I was there and see how many pastors had to hold him down. Uh, he was very strong. And uh, we prayed for him. Uh, after he, the, the demon left, he collapsed like that. And then uh, when he became uh, better, uh, he was able to sit there and learning uh, about God with uh, one of our pastors there. So you can see that God was working, even though it's, it's very difficult. Um, God was working, and he made a lot of miracles to attract people to himself. This pastor. Uh, is actually we call him a telephone pastor because he even casts out demons through the telephone, you know. So it was what he did. So we sent him to one of the provinces that was never entered and very difficult. Uh, so he went there and he asked me, Pastor, you sent me here, tell me what to do. I said, no, I didn't send you there. Jesus sent you there. So you ask Jesus, you know, you, what to do. So he went up to the hill and overlooking the city and he prayed. And he asked his wife to take a photo to show me how, <laughs> how he did it. Uh, so after that, a uh, couple of uh, weeks later, he came across this woman who was chained to her house post, and he was, she was naked. She was chained there for, for over two months like that. Uh, and she was really scary because people were afraid that she would hurt herself and others, so they chained him like, uh, to her like that. Even her legs were chained. Uh, so the pastor prayed for her, it's tradition, so they put the Bible on the head anyway. So you know, the pastor prayed for her and she became better and then started to uh, acknowledge herself a bit more and ask for drink and things like that. And they still chained her because they were afraid. After a couple of weeks, the pastor prayed for her and she was okay. And then so they started to uh, uh, get rid of the chain for her. And this is, uh, video how they they try to get the chain out of her but anyway so we just go further that there uh, her and her children and the pastor after after the incident so you can see how god worked and she became his first member in that uh, in that city in that province and her children too so they were baptized uh, after bible studies with the pastor they moved into the pastor's house, and there they are. And the pastor gave Bible studies and then baptized her and her uh, older children, uh, those who were over 12 years old. Uh, and this is another story. Uh, that's the uh, pastor, the first pastor, the first native pastor uh, in Laos, Pastor Bunpani. He was traveling into the other village, but he was trying to cross this um, creek and that rock actually stopped his car. That's where his car was stopped. And then the engine just went dead. He couldn't start. And people came and tried to jump start for him. It wouldn't work. So he ended up having to stay overnight in that village. And by that time, uh, he went up to the village. The village leader actually used to study Bible with us through correspondence. And he said, oh, I am a Seventh-day Adventist. But there is no other Seventh-day Adventist here. So I joined the Sunday church. So the pastor said, well, uh, why don't we set up a, a church for you? So that's uh, his members joining him, uh, becoming Seventh-day Adventists. So we, overnight, we just turned into a, a Sunday church, turned into Seventh-day Adventist church, because the, the Lord stopped the pastor from going further and with that, uh, with that rock, small rock, submerged rock. But then, uh, the next day, he started his car. It was only one, one try. Boom, and then he went on. So amazing, isn't it? The Lord did 
uh, all sorts of miracles to, uh, to help um, advance his church. And the, and the pastor, also the local pastor, baptized those members there. Uh, so we, the other day, I uh, brought some friends from uh, the Koreans from the United States to visit them. And the Koreans actually gave money to build the church for them. And that's the Korean money to build that church for them. Uh, that's, and the church. And nowadays, the, those are the members in front of the church. Just recently, just last month, we had a historic baptism in Laos, you know. Uh, 122 people were baptized on 11th of April in the South. At the same time, the same Sabbath, 11, uh, 82 people were baptized in the North. Now remember, we cannot have public evangelism. We cannot share our faith. All was restricted and forbidden. And the place where we baptized, uh, 20, 122 and uh, 82, used to be persecuted heavily. Used to. The, the, the other place that uh, we baptized, 122, um, we worked with the government trying to put in community services and things like that. And now we become good friends with the local leadership. And they allow us to, to baptize people and, and conduct worships with no problem at all. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, the other place that we baptized 82 people at the same time, uh, two years before this, um, our pastors went there to share the gospel message. They were arrested and put in, in jail for 10 days. But when they were in jail, they shared the Gospels and the officers and the, uh, were impressed with what they share. And at the end, at the end they let them go, <laughs> let our pastors go. And now we baptize 82 people in that particular district. And more than that, the chief of the village who was uh, behind all the arrest of the, our pastors now became Christian himself. And he was telling others that now they can come and worship in his house. So God is making all these things, and he, he is calling people to himself. And see, that's the baptism that we were able to do before. It would be unthinkable to call people and conduct a, a ceremony like this, a religious ceremony, a Christian ceremony, you know. It would be a, a, a very uh, difficult thing to do. The government uh, agents would come and arrest our pastors. So, but... Uh, in some areas, we were able to do that openly. Other areas, we have to do it secretly in, inside our bathtub or toilets or whatever. We can baptize people. But God is working. That's what my point is. Uh, God is working, and we uh, were able to, um, to do things. This boy actually was um, chained. Uh, when he came to church, you can see there he was in chain. They chained him because he... He was aggressive, he got this um, disease of, uh, I don't know, the call, he became mad when, when he was possessed by something or when his sickness came. So they chained him like that, but uh, uh, we pray for him and the family brought him to church. At home, he was also chained to his, uh, his house there. See the chain there? And he's okay now. Just to pray, the family spent all their money uh, trying to heal him, go to doctors, all these kind of things. That nothing happened to him, but he's okay. So that's uh, that's all. Uh, I have more stories, but my time is limited. <laughs> uh, just want to share with you that uh, Laos would need a lot of your praise. Because, uh, you know, when I first went there in 2011, we went to Laos, there was only one native pastor there, one college-trained pastor. And now we have uh, 12, 12 college-trained pastors, young pastors. All of the leaders are there, very young. I need to train them and uh, make sure that they are able to take up leadership before I come back. Uh, hopefully, maybe 
uh, I'm pretty old now, so maybe in five, six years' time, I will come back. Uh, so hopefully they can take over the country. We now have uh, three language schools. Through language schools, we can make contact with students, their parents, in direct contact, and then through those schools, we can introduce Jesus to them. We have to do things indirectly over there because we cannot do any witnessing, direct preaching or meeting or anything like that. Uh, governments depends on which area you are and if you have good relationship with the local ones and they allow you to do certain, uh, some limited freedoms you can do. But if you don't have good relationship with them, they will persecute you. So that's, it's very difficult. Our members are about uh, 2,000 members at the moment. Uh, and we are in 14 provinces out of 18. So only four more to enter. We're quite spread out, so it's very difficult to, um, to look after our members. Uh, COVID-19 has affected them a lot. Uh, we are undergoing at the moment uh, our biggest operation of uh, COVID relief because we don't have the government like here. Uh, we'll give you some money when you are in need of uh, help. Over there, the government just, uh, uh, you just look after yourselves. So our members are facing a lot of difficulties because of the lockdowns at the moment. You cannot travel. Uh, so our members are in difficult situation. We need to help them. That's why we are going to undergo uh, rice distribution, food distribution for them. Uh, at maybe a couple of weeks, we're trying to do that. So thank you for praying for us, and uh, please continue. If you want to know more about the work in Laos, you can get my email address from Christine. Thank you.